It was actually June 1752. The man saw the sky. He saw the sky was getting darker and darker. The man called his his son William. When both of them were looking at the sky through the window, they saw lightning. And the man, the father, Benjamin Franklin, told his son William, I want to harness the power of God which we call electric force. I want to harness the power of God and I want to call it current. And that's the study of today. One of the fundamental quantity is current. And today, you're going to try to understand the current. So let's pay attention. Before we try to understand current, I want to motivate you the relationship between current and one of the fundamental forces. So let's remind ourselves all fundamental forces in the universe and start with gravity because gravity was the one that discovered before other forces. So number one. Gravitational force act on mass. Gravitational force act on mass. The electromagnetic force act on charge. Photon or nucleus. Nucleus. So we are talking about gravity. So I'm going to put an arrow over here. So let's say one mass over here, one mass over here. Let's call it mass one and let's call it mass two. According to Sarah Isaac Newton, there is attractive force. So that's force between these two mass and Sir Isaac Newton also gave us an equation to calculate the attractive force between these two mass g m1 m2 over r squared you get it so gravity acts on mass and to find the gravitational force between two objects here is the equation that's how you find it now electric magnetic force is not as simple as gravitational force because electromagnetic force before 1832 there were five fundamental forces in the universe because before 1832 before faraday michael faraday combined them together with the help of maxwell because he put them together with the math created by maxwell there were five fundamental forces because electric force was different than the magnetic force and magnetic force was different than electric force. What am I talking about? Let's write it down. So electric force solves. And magnetic force was discovered by hands. Hans Oersted. The French, uh, the French scientist and the Danish scientist, they discovered, he discovered the electric force 1785, 17, uh, you don't see it, so 1785, and he discovered magnetic force 1820, 1832, Faraday put them together using the mathematics created by Maxwell, James Clark Maxwell, so now, Let's go back to electro electric force. So uh, now, now let's just like the magnetic force. Electric force, as I said, discovered by Charles Coulomb, a French physicist. He discovered electric force. What year he discovered electric force? 1785. Now, electric force act on what? Act on charge. Charge. And what is the symbol for charge? Symbol for charge is Q. Now, all right. So, as you remember that the gravitational force acts on mass, this is how the gravitational force acts on mass. This is how gravitational force acts on mass. The electric force acts on charge, and this is how it acts on charge. Let's use the different color for electric force. Let's use red for electric force. So this is Q1 because the charge is Q, Q1 and Q2. However, this is attractive force. 
attractive force. So this is attractive and repulsive. This is repulsive and attractive. All right. So this one, how you can find, calculate the attractive force between two. As I told you, the equation Sir Isaac Newton wrote the equation mg is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. How you can calculate the attractive or repulsive force between two charges? The equations are almost the same as you see that. Um, the motivation comes from actually Sir Isaac Newton. So instead of FG, you write FE. Instead of G, you write K. K is the Coulomb constant. G is the Newton constant. Instead of N, you want to write Q1. Instead of M2, you want to write Q2. Instead of R, you want to write R squared. Instead of yeah, R squared, R squared, they're the same. So you see the formula, they almost the same because the motivation came from Sir Isaac Newton. Now, one thing you're going to remember, when we talk about mass, mass, we talk about gravitational force, and when you talk about charge, we talk about electric force. Now let's take a look about the strong nuclear force. A strong nuclear force acts on nucleus. So let's say so your big mass is 23, atomic number is 11. So let's draw in the first shell, 1 and 2. The second shell, you have 1, 2, uh, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the last shell, you have just 1. In the nucleus, so this is the nucleus, in both neutron and proton, um, so 12 plus what is 23? 11. So 11 proton, 11 proton and 12 neutron. Now, as you see that the proton, proton are positively charged. Proton are plus, 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 plus. So how can proton in the nucleus? Proton there is a repulsive force because they are the like charge. According to Coulomb, like charge repulse. So how do proton inside the nucleus exist without exploding? It's because there is a strong force. If there was no strong force, I won't be here standing up talking to you, making this YouTube video for you to understand it because I am a matter. That means I made of atom. That means inside of me, inside of my atom, there is a nucleus. That means inside that nucleus, there is a proton. That means there is a repulsive force inside the nucleus. That means if there was no strong force, there would be no stable atom. That means there would be no universe because everything made of universe. You get it fully. All right, so now the strong force acts on nucleus. Strong force acts on nucleus. Now, let's talk about the weak nuclear force. What weak nuclear force acts on? Weak nuclear force acts on leptons. What we're talking about? When we talk about leptons, here's what we talk about. So let's erase this one. So when we talk about leptons, let's look at the matter. So what is the matter? So matter has two properties. Matter has volume and matter of mass. Anything that has mass can take up space. That means volume. Inside the matter, what do you see? You see hadrons and, and leptons. And leptons. Right, this is the, on the page three of your reference table. Everybody should look up, look on the reference table. Look at, look, go to the page three, and you see this matter broken down to hadrons and leptons. You cannot break down to leptons because leptons are electrons, but you can break down the hadrons. Hadrons can be divided into two: baryons and mesons. Right, so baryons is Three quark and meson is quark and anti quark. Now, the weak nuclear force acts on leptons. Weak nuclear force acts on leptons, okay? Is um, responsible for nuclear decay. What is nuclear decay? Nuclear decay is a process. Is a process. Weak nuclear force is a force that allows unstable atoms. So, if you look at the periodic table, what do you see? You see 118 elements 118 atoms they all are different from hydrogen to all the way 118 from the bismuth from the bismuth bismuth to 118 they are all unstable they are all unstable they all want to become stable and nuclear and weak nuclear force allow them to become stable okay all right so you get it hopefully now when he looked at the sky he saw the sky was getting darker and darker he saw the lightning 
and he realized that that's the force, force of God. And we now call it electric force. And then he said that I can harness the power of God. Now, how do we harness the power of God? We harness the power of God creating a machine, and this is the machine. Now, you're probably going to think that this looks like a rectangle. The, uh, it doesn't look like a machine. We're going to turn this rectangle to a machine. How are we going to do that? All right, we're going to put the battery that invented by Alessandro Volta. So let's put the battery. Battery was invented 1800. Alessandro Volta, Italian scientist. Okay, since battery was invented by Volta, we're going to call this derived quantity voltage. Voltage. Alright, so we're going to create a list, a new list. So voltage, this, this is voltage, we just, just call it volt, uh, so voltage, volt. There's a unit. Now, what comes next in that we're going to turn this uh, rectangle to a circuit. Uh, this is not circuit yet, that's why I did not write the circuit. We're going to put something called a resistor. So we're going to put a resistor. Uh, we're going to put a resistor. Okay, let's put the resistor and we're going to call it R. All right, what resistor does in, in, in the circuit? Resistor, what resistor does in the circuit, it provides the resistance. Okay, let's create an analogy, all right? So when you go to a route, all right, you go outside a busy road. What do you see? You see traffic police. What does traffic? What does a traffic police do? The traffic police control the flow of traffic. So then, if traffic police control the flow of traffic, then there would be the more traffic police you have on a busy road, the less accident you want to have on the road. So, so. What do you call that type of accident? You call car accident. That means the more traffic police you have, the less accident you have. The more resistor you have, the less accident you have in the circuit. What do you call this accident? You call short circuit, okay? So in order to prevent the short circuit, we have to have a resistor in the circuit. We call them res and they provide resistance as the traffic police provides control. They provide resistance. So we're gonna call them R. So we are learning R. So R is a resistance. So what is the SI unit for R? This is called omega. But we're not going to call omega. We're going to call ohm. So ohm, what is it? Ohm is the last name of someone named Greg Simon Ohm. So he was a physicist, gave us something very important. We call it Ohm's law. Ohm's law. And Ohm's law tells us a triangular relationship of the circuit. So this is the circuit. So what the circuit gives us? Circuit gives us current. So circuit gives us current. And the car flows on the road. All right? Current flows in the circuit. So the current flows in the circuit. How, how, how does it flow? It flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal in a given amount of time. That's the definition of current. Okay? And this definition can be triangulized by Ohm's law. So let's triangulate this definition. So V I R. That means V is equal to what? I R. That means I is equal to V over R. That means R is equal to V over I. All right, so this is called Ohm. So this is something you need to know six months from today, but I am going to give you some understanding right now because when you dive into the physics, you'll enjoy the concept. All right, so now keep that in mind. The next thing we learn today is charge, but I'm gonna write the current as well. Today okay. is charge. And Charles is Coulomb. Because Coulomb was the one that discovered the electric force 1785. Don't forget that. Now, this is the quantities we learned to. Well, we learned this the quantities except this one. This one we learned a long time ago. Very nice. Now, we're going to turn this definition, turn this diagram to a definition. All right? So, what is the name of this? What is the name of this machine? The name of this machine is electric circuit. 
what is the product of this machine? The product of this machine is current. What is the definition of current? There's, this is the definition of current. So current is, is flow of electron, uh, flow of, uh, current is flow of charges, charges in the electric circuit from positive terminal to the negative terminal in a given amount of time. So now I want you to turn this definition to an equation because equation is more powerful than anything else in the universe. So how are you going to turn this, this definition to an equation? All right, so pay attention to current, pay attention to charge, and pay attention to time. All right, so time is one of the quantities you can write, and you can be made ourselves time is S. All right, so now we're going to turn this definition to an equation. All right, so the current, we're going to write I, and then we're going to write charge. Charge is Q, and we're gonna write T. So that means the current is proportional to the charges, inversely proportional to the time. Does that make sense? All right, so the current is the flow of charges. Current is the flow of charges, that's what it says. Current is the flow of charges in a given amount of time. All right, now you saw another definition of current before from Ohm's law. Ohm's law tells us that the current is not this, the current is something else, V I R. You remember that V I R, that's the Ohm's law. Ohm's law tells us current is V over I R. Current is V over R. Our definition says that current is Q over T. Now, which one is correct? Can both be correct? We don't know. We have to investigate because as a scientist, we just don't take anything blindly. I don't want you to take anything blindly, so we have to investigate. Let's do the investigation. So now we're going to write Q over T is equal to V over R. Now what is Q? Now we're gonna write Q. What is the SI unit for Q? The SI unit for Q is sitting next to me. The SI unit for Q is C. And the SI unit for time is S. All right, good, that's, that's, that's good. V, what is V? V is staring at me right now. So V is staring at me right now. Uh, v is staring at me now. V is, V is I, R. So V is, I'm gonna replace V by I, R. All right. Um, so, so this is V over. This is V over. Uh, v over R. This is V over R. And then R. Okay. So as you see that R R cancel. Now C. What is C? Uh, let's give give you some motivation of C over here. So then you saw that current is Q over T. Then Q is I T. Then Q is C. Then C is I is A and T is S. And T must C must be A S. So C must be A S over S. Is equal to I must be what is I? I must be A. Alright, so I must be A. So I is A. S is cancelled. So you see A is equal to A. So indeed Q over T is equal to V over R. You get it? So now let's summarize what we learned today. One day, one day. 268 years ago, a man in Philadelphia, the name of the man was Benjamin Franklin, 46 year old man in Philadelphia, in June 1752, was looking through a window, saw the sky was getting dark and dark, also saw lightning. He called his son William, he told his son, Look at the sky. What do you see? You see a force. You see the power of God. I am going to harness the power of God. I'm going to create a machine that harnesses the power of God. And I'm going to call it current.